I think we should start with uh, with what happened um, and get an accurate view of what happened because I think there's a lot of details being thrown around with uh, with this particular case of George Floyd. Um, you know, uh, they I've I've watched a bunch of the footage. I've listened to a bunch of press releases and all that other shit that came out because of it. And here's here's what I've noticed. Here's the recap that I'm going to give you guys. Uh, George Floyd, he was arrested pr pretty violently. Uh, top to bottom, I mean, there was just a lot of aggression from uh, the Minneapolis Police Department. Um, there was no real, like... Like, they pulled up. I watched the video. I watched both the video of Derek Chauvin and and that other cop, Tio, I think his name was. I can't remember what the other cop's name is uh, uh, um, off the top of my head. I apologize for that. But, um, you know, I watched the footage that we all watched. But I also saw the footage of what led to that. Right? Because that's always, that's always people, that's what they always talk about. It's just like, oh, but maybe he was resisting arrest. You know, yeah, th made that scary stuff, the resisting of the arrest when they're when they got when they're bending your arm backwards and you go, owie, that's that's re that's resistance right there. Don't say owie. Don't you know, you got to keep it. Come on. These are cops. Their jobs are hard. Uh, So I watched it. They didn't do anything wrong. Um. What do they what do they stop him for is he was trying to uh, the allegedly. Uh, was trying to was or, or he purchased some merchandise with a counterfeit twenty dollar bill. To which the normal thing would be to be like, "Hey, did you know that you paid with a counterfeit twenty dollar bill? Where did you get that bill from? Are you making these this instead of they dragged everybody out of the car? They they handcuffed him. They handcuffed George Floyd. They threw him over to the side, um, and uh, and you know." Um, then they, the second police car arrives. So now there's four cops on the scene. Everybody's handcuffed sitting on the side of the road. Then they specifically grab George Floyd and they drag him up and they push him up against the wall. And you can clearly see like he is in pain. He is already handcuffed. He does not need to be treated like this. And then what they do is they parade him across the street. And which which is what led to the video that we saw, right? And in the video, the the infamous now infamous video, uh, what does George Floyd say? Officer, I can't breathe. My neck hurts. Uh, and uh, and the, the, there's three officers sitting on. He's handcuffed on the ground. Three officers on top of him. Derek Chauvin's knee is on George Floyd's neck. Says I can't breathe. My neck hurts. And they're still on him. And the other officer that's standing in front of them goes, this is why you don't do drugs, kids. Like, this is some fucking dare presentation, right? Like, the most fucked up dare presentation that you could possibly see. Also, dare doesn't work because guess what? Uh, weed's not bad. Marijuana is, it's getting legalized all over the place, right? Like, that's so this drug charge, whatever. What is he on, PCP? Prove it. He wasn't on PCP. He just, there, there was no drugs involved. And even the person in the video is like, I don't think this is about drugs. <laughs> like, I feel like this is about you putting your full weight on a person's neck. Like, maybe fucking don't. This is why you don't do drugs, kids. No, that's not. What are you talking about? That's not what this is about. This is, this is about you fucking murdering people. <laughs> Stop doing that. What they did this for is is a counterfeit twenty dollar bill for a, a, an a, an alleged suspected forgery charge. Holy shit! If Derek Chauvin finds out about Wall Street, boy howdy, do, do, do I got a bunch of necks you can put your knee on? Because they've they've been running forgery rackets for for years. I mean, the footage before is basically George Floyd complying with what the cops are saying. He got out of his car. He was answering the questions. He got handcuffed. He moved. He sat down in the corner. He wasn't resisting arrest. 
So, you know, immediately after this footage gets released, a mayor fires all the cops, which is the right thing to do. But it took them an entire week to charge Derek Chauvin, the guy that was on George Floyd's neck. Um, you know, the phrase I've had it up to here is, yeah, that's about where we've had it up to with this fucking police brutality shit. Like literally we've, because you were on that guy's neck and it took you a week, a week to come out and say, yeah, this dude murdered an innocent person and should be arrested and put in prison on murder charges like first degree murder charges. So the charge right now, which took all week to do, and the mayor came out and he made these speeches. Um, manslaughter and third degree murder is what they're saying. Um, and now there's also some, uh, there's like medical reports where they're like, well, I don't know if it was, Derek Chauvin sitting on this guy's neck. He had some prior heart conditions and, uh, you know, these pre-existing conditions might have been what did him in. He might have, that pre-existing condition, they have a lot of symptoms. Oh, is one of the symptoms a police officer putting his knee on your neck? Is that uh, part of this heart condition that uh, George Floyd had? It's just like randomly police officers would show up and put their knee on his neck. Is that, is that part of the pre-existing condition? Is police brutality part of this heart? Boy, this heart condition sounds real fucked up, you guys. How have we not tried to, like, cure this heart? The, the, it just, like, conjures up violent police officers and, uh, and murders black people? Oh, my goodness. Where did this... Boy, where did this pre-existing condition start? Huh? The Minneapolis Police Department, by the way... Uh, sees what Derek Chauvin did as a legal move. It's a totally legal thing for him to do, by the way. Uh, they allow this aggressive move. The, the Department of Justice, the DOJ, and virtually every other police department out there is like, oh, no, that's a crazy thing to do. To put your full weight on a human being's neck is like, that's like not a thing to do. And the Minneapolis Police Department is like, yeah, but is it though? Like, it's pretty, like, it looks pretty cool though. Like, have you seen those photos? Like, you kind of look like a superhero while you're doing it. You know, like you got that knee and you're like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a superhero cop because I got my knee on a bad guy's neck. I'm like a superhero. It's pretty cool. Like, it's pretty cool. Everybody else is like, oh, my God, no, it's not. It's, like, crazy. Like, it's a super crazy thing to do. Like, don't do that to people. But is it, I mean, it's not really a surprise, right, that cops are doing this shit. Look at what happened with Officer Pantaleo and Eric Garner. He, like, he used an illegal chokehold, like a chokehold that the NYPD is told not to use. And he still didn't get fired. He still didn't get arrested. This is a systemic problem, and aggression like this is is rewarded. It's like, oh, you get a desk job. In fact, actually, we don't want to be associated with this bad press, so we're going to move you to a different police department where you get to just restart this cycle of aggressive, violent fucking bullshit again. You know, you can go in and be like, guys, you want to see me look like a superhero? Because it's going to be super cool for the photo ops. You know, they fucking just restart that process all over again. And then it's excuse. And then some. In in the case of the Minneapolis Police Department, this is excused behavior. So the 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 um, concern I have is because it's a legal move, they won't see this as murder, and that's why they're. I I think that's probably why they're doing um, a, a reduced murder charge, uh, because then the Minneapolis Police Department is going to have to fucking redo its entire training, which is like yeah, fucking good. You should redo all your training. That should not be a that should not be in your SOP. That should not be a part of your standard operating procedure. That's banana sandwiches that you fucking think that this is the right thing to do. 
So there are experts that are looking at this case. The experts say that um, asphyxia is what caused Floyd's death. Uh, and the city continues to say, no, 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 it was the pre-existing conditions. That's probably what it was. We're going to check into it. It really seems like those pre-existing conditions. You know the pre-existing condition where the cop chokes you out? You guys know that one? Like this is, I feel like this is almost as bad as like, like we're veering into that bullshit race sciences world, you know, where where people are people are like, well, I mean, this is not really that big of a deal. We all know the blacks; they have the thicker necks, they have stronger neck muscles. They're built for this sort of stuff. Like you, that bullshit race science that they used to use. Like this is kind of where we're going with that, right? Like, oh, the pre-existing conditions of the heart. It wasn't somebody stand, putting their full weight of a of a, a giant human body on a tiny part of someone's trachea. Like that's not, no, no, no. It was the other things. That's just science. I love it. They all, they all, they all of a sudden, all of a sudden these assholes start believing in science. Right? Hey, put your mask on. That's my rights. Oh, all of a sudden black man dies. Oh, no, no, no. It's a science. Pre-existing conditions are science. Everybody. So the other thing that they that they do in these situations too is, uh, you know, they look up a fucking tweet that that he might have had in two thousand two that was uh, might not have been politically correct, or or he took a photo of himself, of, you know, holding up a Tupac album. Holy shit! Um, you know, he 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 supported fucking who was that abusive rapper? One of one of those. Whoever Rihanna was dating, I can't remember that asshole's name. You know, he was like, oh, he made a tweet saying he was a fan of that guy. Huh? This is, that guy deserves to die. They always kind of do that shit. But George Floyd was described as a gentle giant. Gentle giant. That's what he was described as. And uh, he didn't resist the arrest. He complied with the officers. And then when Derek Chauvin was on his neck, he let them know he can't breathe. And they're saying, oh, I can hear you fine. When experts are saying, yeah, when you're being asphyxiated, you can still talk. Like your vocal cords are still active. You just don't have any air going into your lungs. That's a different fucking thing. Which is like, yeah, you want to sit there and say, oh, it's a science for pre-existing conditions, but you won't actually accept medical science that says you can speak while you're being asphyxiated because your vocal cords can still vibrate and make sound. You're a fucking lunatic. <laughs> Mayor Fry basically came out and said uh, uh, he wrestled. He wrestled with this, uh, with what happened to with, to George Floyd for 36 hours before making his uh, his press release. Dude, I watched that video and in 36 seconds. I was like, that dude should be fired and arrested for fucking murder. There's a, uh, I think this was a, a Minneapolis rapper by the name of Sims, uh, who's fantastic. Highly recommend Sims and Doomtree and, and the entire collective. But uh, he came out and made, he kind of pointed this out. And I was like, that's fucking gold. That's so funny. Like, that's one of those things, like, I wish I would have thought of that first. But um, he basically was like, uh, you know, they're, they're saying that they need more evidence to file charges against Derek Chauvin. And um, I think what we all need to do as a, as a people is come together uh, and get Mayor Fry and the Hennepin County District Attorney's Office the internet. I mean, fucking this video is everywhere. It's fucking everywhere. Like, there's no way you couldn't have seen that video. And that's all the proof you need. There's a bunch of bystanders that are like, how long do you need to fucking do that? It's a nine minute video and the last four or three or four minutes of it, he's not moving. George Floyd is not moving. Oh, I wrestled with for 36 hours. Dude, the second that dude's on his neck, you're like, that dude is fucking insane. And Derek Chauvin needs to be in prison. For sure. What do you mean 36 hours? Holy shit. Little little point of um, an interesting point uh, that I found, and a friend of mine was telling me this too, is that he had met George Floyd and, and had seen Officer Chauvin 
Uh, but Officer Chauvin and George Floyd worked security at the same nightclub. Um, uh, uh, Floyd was was uh, part of the security staff. And Chauvin was their off-duty cop that would show up. Kind of a weird, suspicious thing. Um, that, you know, they, there, there probably could be an investigation done to see, like, what happened. Um you know, like what happened there? Was there an altercation in the video? It didn't seem like either one of them recognized each other. Uh, and that's very possible because from the statements that I've read, there was a lot of people that worked at that nightclub and that's fair. Um, you know, like I worked at, I worked at two different Starbucks and I never met all the employees there. Right. So it's just, that's just the sort of thing that happens, especially when you have like a larger staff. Like even when you have like a staff of like more than 10 people, you're not going to fucking meet everybody. You know, here's the other thing with Derek Chauvin, too. Um, he had 10 counts uh, of conduct complaints that all involved violence. All of them involved violence. And uh, Amy Klobuchar, who's currently being vetted to be the vice presidential candidate for Joe Biden uh, and who uh, when she was D.A., put an innocent black teenager in prison for fucking life for a crime he did not commit, where she basically paid people $500 to just say whatever they wanted to say and, and say that's evidence without really corroborating any of the facts that she misled an investigation and she ruined a fucking young kid's life forever. This lady declined to bring up charges against Derek Chauvin's, uh, you know, violent conduct complaints that he had. That's how high up the system this problem goes. That's how high up the chain this thing goes. That's why we're all fucking pissed. This lady's being vetted to be the vice president of the United States to a dementia patient running for president right now. And if she gets that nomination and somehow Joe Biden manages to get through and win, and then what happens? He becomes mentally unfit to, to, to run the country and she takes over. You're going to tell me that that is going to prevent police violence across this country towards any minority community. Are you shitting? No fucking way. This lady is known to let these violent criminals go. Because they wear a blue fucking suit and a badge. And she wants their votes. She wants their votes. They make these half-hearted fucking tweets. Who gives a shit? Where's the legislation that says you're going to change the way policing is done in this country? And you're going to stop militarizing the goddamn cops? Where's that piece of legislation? Oh, that's right. It doesn't get written. You send your fucking tweets and your press releases out, and then you don't do dick all about it. And then Amy Klobuchar will decline to press charges against violent cops, will put innocent black kids in prison, won't say a goddamn thing about people shooting black men in their vehicles for being legal gun owners. That's who is going to be the vice president. And oh, and then we're supposed to look at the Democrats and be like, oh yeah, they're the good guys. Yeah, the good guys are ensuring that innocent people are staying in prison and violent police officers continue to be violent. That's who the Democrats are. The Republicans are just racist assholes. They're going to, you know, look at the, look at somebody like George Floyd and be like, well, he shouldn't have been doing something illegal. Anything illegal deserves death. If you, if you jaywalk, we're going to chop your feet off and set you on fire in, fr in front of everybody. That's what the Republicans do. They're not shy about that shit. They're proud of that shit. The Democrats are a little bit more sneaky about it. Neither party has your interest in mind or the interest of the minority community in mind. Arguably, the Democrats might be worse because they make these half-hearted fucking claims and then do nothing about it. That's the leadership in this country right now. That's why we're all fucking pissed. Okay, let's, let's look at the comment. That we have, uh, they're telling us what we saw, never mind what we really saw. Yeah, it's gaslighting. 
Uli, it's gaslighting. It's exactly what they're doing. We saw this man get asphyxiated, and uh, they're like, no, 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 he had a heart condition. What? Yeah, yeah, the heart condition is what did him in. What? There was a man on his neck. <laughs> Dude, I've accidentally choked myself out wearing a shirt that's too tight. Like, I can't, and, and that's just, like, I know the discomfort of that. I can't even imagine, like, multiply that by, like, a, a thousand. And that's what was happening to George Floyd. And they're just like, no, no, no. It's just uh, the reason you felt that is because uh, you have, like, a weak, dumb heart. Because you're a, a pussy liberal. That's probably why you, why that shirt. Yeah, it wasn't, it's not because it's two sizes too small. And you're, but it's because of your weak, dumb, pussy liberal heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, prob that's probably what George Floyd had. Yeah, yeah, He has a condition called weak, pussy liberal heart. And that is, uh, that's probably what did him in, unfortunately. You know, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to reduce the charges on this murderous cop and kind of just let him go like we've done 10 times before. That's what they do. I, I hope you guys can't hear that car alarm going off in the background because it's super fucking loud. You're right. I can't even wear a turtleneck sweater. I know, right? Yeah, it's just, it, yeah, I don't like my, like, this is, this is as much as I'm, I'm willing to go. And there was a dude, like, imagine if this was like a person, like, that would be crazy. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed the content that you saw in this video, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button, and share this with some people uh, that you think would enjoy or benefit from uh, a video like this. Um, as some of you might know, if you have already subscribed, I am a uh, full-time touring performer that has been grounded uh, due to the pandemic situation that we are seeing all across the country. So I am going to be doing some virtual live stand-up comedy shows. I've done a few of these already. I'm doing them every single Friday in June at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Each show is going to be different. Each show talks about uh, different topics, different themes, different jokes. So uh, if you're interested in um, the topics that we discussed today, you'll probably be interested in a show like that. And because of everything that is going on um, in our society right now with the protests and um, and the the uh, the activism that we're seeing, um, uh, the Friday, June fifth show, one hundred percent of those ticket sales will be donated to the Minnesota Freedom Fund, uh, and then uh, going forward, fifty percent of every single uh, show's ticket sales will be donated to the Minnesota Freedom Fund. Uh, for June. So uh, grab your tickets, help out a good cause, come check out a, a, a cool, interesting show that you probably won't catch on uh, uh, on any sort of mainstream comedy network. Um, the other thing is I'm also releasing a brand new stand-up comedy album called Politely Angry. I toured it all across the country uh, for about a year. It's recorded in uh, St. Louis, Biloxi, and Rochester, New York. You can uh, pre-order it on uh, Bandcamp right now, but it's also going to be released on June 1st and will be available on all the other uh, streaming and downloading platforms. You can go directly to my website, krishmohan.com, to grab your copy of the album, grab your tickets to come see the show. Um, and while you're there, you can also make a donation to, to me if you would like to, if you would like to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member, that's also an option as well. Once again, you can go to krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next one.